Zombo and welcome to Dawi Kudin. My guest tonight is the director of Bhutan National Legal Institute, Mr. Pema Uchula. So thank you so much for your time. Maybe uh, apart from what we have already discussed in yes. our conversation, yes. first thing that I would like to know from you is the status of alternate dispute resolution that has been a serious project uh, undertaken by uh, Our Royal Highness uh, Sunam Deshi Wong Chula. Yes, uh, thank you Dawa to uh, pick up this uh, EDR uh, issues. Uh, I must uh, inform you that uh, the alternative dispute resolution, the training on alternative dispute res resolution uh, conducted by Bhutan National Legal Institute has uh, has gone a very long way in uh, benefiting the grassroots people. Yes. Why I'm saying this is because uh, we have been receiving uh, feedback from uh, village uh, elders yes. as well as from uh, the public and uh, they have given us uh, lots of uh, encouragement and uh, they have uh, shown us uh, a way forward. So taking uh, encouragement and uh, the path uh, they have shown us. Now what we have recently done was, um, as, as you are aware that uh, last year we have been uh, talking about uh, institutionalizing uh, mediation from the uh, Bhutanese perspective. Yes. So I must uh, inform you that uh, now under the uh, dynamic leadership of uh, Her Royal Highness Ji uh, Sonam Deshin Wang Chuk, uh, we have achieved that uh, the instru institutionalizing the uh, Bhutanese mediation. In a sense, uh, very recently uh, we have invited uh, one consultant from uh, University of Queensland, from yes. Brisbane, Australia, and she is one of the renowned, uh, renowned uh, uh, professors who is well versed in the mediation, and she is known to, throughout. Uh, and she was invited here and then the, she has done a research based on the, the data that we have collected, empirical data during our training uh, to Mangmis in two, uh, 20 Zongkha class here. And that data we have uh, given to her and then oh, she yes. has done uh, research. So based on that research and we have come up with a wonderful uh, uh, papers yes. or a document that uh, supports uh, institutionalizing uh, Bhutanese uh, perspective of mediation. And uh, now we have come up and we are comfortable to inform you that uh, now the, we have uh, Bhutanese uh, mediation that is uh, Tinlam model. Yes. So the, she has come up with this uh, after doing lots of research for about a month. Then based on this Tinlam model, what we have done was uh, we have uh, conducted uh, trainers of trainer to judges and lawyers the, and uh, other uh, legal uh, professionals for one week. Yes. It's very recent. The purpose and what objectives of uh, training this TOT is to have a, a multiplier effect. This TOT trainers, uh, they will uh, assess uh, Bhutan National Legal Institute in conducting a mediation training here and after. And uh, to have uh, more uh, expertise, to gain more expertise by this uh, TOT group, and even for that matter, I myself is in one of the uh, members in TOT. And after learning from that uh, professor, then what we have done was to gain uh, practical experience. We have conducted uh, training to the registrars of the court from yes. the kingdom last week. And from that, uh, we have gained more confidence again now. So with that confidence, uh, the president of uh, Bhutan National Legal Institute has uh, given us more uh, encouragement uh, to go in for having uh, to conduct uh, mediation training to women mediators in the kingdom and that we are soon going to uh, conduct uh, training for the women mediators in Bhutan. So to put it uh, in a short way, the mediation is a child brain of uh, Royal Highness, aiming to take uh, justice to every doorsteps in the community. And uh, one distinction that uh, I want to inform you is uh, the mediation that we are looking for 
and we are dealing with the mediation at the institute is totally f viewing from the perspective of uh, rural uh, setup, yes. not from the commercial uh, setup. The because uh, if you talk about the commercial setup, then there is no point in uh, saying that uh, we wanted to take uh, justice yes. to the doorsteps. And finally, is to enhance the cross-national happiness, to contribute at least directly or indirectly towards the four pillars of cross-national happiness. Yes. If there is peace in the society, there will be tranquility. Tranquility means happiness. Yes. So yes. that is the main objectives. Yes, sir. Uh, not having to go to court in itself is creating harmony, no matter what uh, kind of problems that uh, crop up uh, within neighbours or within families, or could be anybody. Yes. Listening to a foreigner, a consultant, would be one thing, but it could be quite another to listen to our senior citizens because yes. the process of mediation, I believe, had been there in our system yes. years and yes. years back. Yes. So have you been listening to our own people, our seniors, who are quite uh, wor well versed when it comes to mediation? Yes, thank you for asking this question. Uh, when we when when I talk about uh, institutionalizing mediation and by having expertise from uh, uh, foreign countries, it doesn't mean that uh, we are going to uh, get all the the mediation practices or the principles that are available outside Bhutan is going to be adopted here. That's not the uh, motives yes. at the institute, because uh, we were warned uh, from the very beginning by our uh, honourable president that. Uh, Bhutan is a small country, and uh, Bhutan has uniqueness in every every aspect. Uh, so therefore, our uniqueness in terms of mediation has to be recognized and has yes. to be preserved and has to be protected. So with this vision from our honorable president, what uh, we have done was uh, when we conducted training to 205 uh, Mangmis, that we have done with uh, consultative training, because we have been consulting with the 205 Mangmis on the three issues. Number one is on the past uh, past experiences of mediation yes. in Bhutan. And number two is on the present uh, mediation practices. And finally, third one is what kind of mediation that the, our Bhutanese uh, in the grassroots uh, level are expecting. So taking this uh, knowledge by asking them and by interviewing them and listening to them. Yes. So then we have uh, done a research here at the institute, and with that research and with that report, we have, uh, uh, in fact, we have uh, guided the consultant. This is our perspective, and as you have said, uh, the mediation has been in our country from the, from the date uh, the Guru Rinpoche has, uh, has stepped into our country. So that. Uh, uh, the historical perspective of uh, existence of mediation and the cultural uh, cultural uh, essence of uh, mediation and for that matter uh, as you have rightly pointed out mediation has been practiced whether it once liked liked uh, whether like it or not because the formal uh, education uh, mechanism has been established in the late uh, uh, 50s or 60s so till that point of time there is a dispute one cannot deny that there is no dispute in Bhutan because whenever there is a two person existed, then there is a dispute. So all this dispute has been settled, whether it is amicable or in a different manner. But the means of settlement was done through mediation. So finally, when we have uh, come up with this uh, Thunlam model of mediation, it is totally based on the Bhutanese perspective of mediation. But when we have gone in for uh, interviewing people and then through consultative uh, trainings, this uh, the consultant was also surprised in the sense, knowingly or unknowingly, in the rural areas or in the uh, remote uh, communities, our Bhutanese elders, our Bhutanese mediators, our Bhutanese uh, uh, people in the far flung villages, they have been practicing the time tested uh, mediation modules that are that are actually uh, practiced in the international area. Yes. For that instance, uh, there are two models, like evolutive uh, and uh, facilitative models. So in that way, we have a sort of a blend of uh, both 
botanists as well as time tested principles in the international area. Maybe one of the confusions that yes. uh, I'd like to point out is alternative dispute resolution, as I said earlier, is yes. definitely creating harmony within the society. Yes. Going to court does not really create harmony between yes. the litigants. Yes. That is obvious. So taking this into account, one confusion that people have is you need to have certified mediators yes. to settle cases in between any individuals. Yes. And if people are not uh, legitimate uh, mediators, then one cannot assume the role of a medi mediator. Is that true, sir? Uh, as I have said, uh, the, our perspective from the Institute is uh, not on the commercial basis. So taking this, uh, keeping this in view, uh, I must say that uh, it is not necessary that one should have uh, certified uh, mediators. Why? Because number one is, as I have said, we view this mediation and we want to protect and preserve our cultural, our historical perspective of mediation. Because uh, this certification of uh, mediators was not existed in uh, Bhutan. In the, if, you, if, you, if you research in the historical perspective as well as in the cultural. So it was, uh, the mediation was done by the village elders on the basis of trust and confidence. Okay. So for that matter, now certification is of a modern concept, but uh, we are not denying that uh, that is bad. We consider it is good, but at the same time, we wanted to preserve what has been existed in our country. So for that matter, we are not saying that uh, the mediator should be certified one. Anyone, anybody who has trust and confidence of uh, parties can become a mediator. Yes. Or for that matter, one need not have uh, professional training in mediation. For that matter, one need not have uh, studied uh, the principles of mediation. So one can become mediators. But important thing is the people should have trust and confidence in, in him or her. Yes. yes. So, we have been awarding certificate. The, our president has been awarding certificate to the trainers. But that doesn't mean that uh, these people are the only person who are eligible to uh, mediate. Yes. But we are giving certificate, it's just in recognition that he or she has attended or completed the course of mediation training. So if you do not have any yes. other options, go to these people yes. because they are the certified ones. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so, Talking about uh, the establishment of law clubs in schools and colleges, how have you progressed uh, on this? Uh, we have done a good job on that, and uh, this is also the the, the, the vision of uh, our president, because uh, we we had uh, we have gone in for establishing these uh, law clubs, but uh, there's a little bit of confusion in the sense uh, our intention was not to teach uh, school children the provisions of law. Yes. So, okay. Uh, we are not there to make uh, children to have uh, law books in their hand and then to read or to, you know. Our intention is to have, create awareness. Through awareness, the young mind should uh, respect for the law. Yes. If they respect for the law, then they will appreciate the law. If they appreciate the law, when they become elders, so they will have uh, 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 respect, and then in that way, they will not com come in conflict with the laws. So ultimately, it boils down to harmony again. So that was the our, our intention. So with that, uh, and all the, 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 the uh, school management, and even from the Minister of Education, all of them were very supportive. Yes. So in that way, we have uh, established in 24 higher secondary schools as a pilot project, and all of them were doing very well. So giving, this has given us, again, uh, lots of uh, encouragement. So for that matter, now we are trying to come up with uh, some programs like uh, by conducting, by organizing a legal quiz competition. Yes. And after that, then go for a moot court but we want to go it in a phase-wise, in a uh, s slow movement, because uh, the moment uh, one hears and one talks about the law, 
that people tend to take one step back. Oh, this is law. This law means something yes. to do with punishment. Yes, punishment, all like yes. that. So, in that way, we are going slowly. And now, another issue that we want to, and another activities that we want to come up is uh, to put or to place uh, mediation. Mediation in the schools. Yes. And that law clubs is going to be a pioneer uh, group, pioneer group, because now mediation in the sense, not a mediation that that uh, that is in practice at the village level or the, among the adults, yes. but uh, the mediation in the schools, that law clubs will be a pioneer group in the sense whenever there is a trivial uh, disciplinary issues in the schools or there is a violation of uh, rules and regulation by uh, children, school, then be before they go and before they directly go to the disciplinary committee in the schools, yes. The law clubs can have among themselves amicably resolve, and if that works, then the violators can have a comfortable, and then they have a normal uh, uh, activities in the schools. So, from that angle, we are going to uh, invite uh, experts, and then we will uh, try to give information, We're very in the, but in a very simplistic form not in a complicated form, which the children can understand. So then we are going to train the club coordinators and some teachers, as, as well as uh, the, the, the club members, students, on how to, some basic uh, strategies, how to mediate, how to resolve uh, certain uh, uh, violation of rules and regulations. So these are our future activities for law clubs. Okay. Thank you. Maybe uh, I think uh, I do have some general questions. Please. But before that, uh, I think uh, the ones that are pertinent to your institution Please. or to you as a director of Bhutan National Legal Institute, tomorrow there will be a launch of two series of television programs yes. that uh, you have come up with. And one, I believe, is a, an animated series that you are going yes. to come up with. Yes. So if you could take us through briefly. Uh, very briefly. Uh, the, all the conceptualization has been uh, from the president, and the basic aim is uh, to to give uh, awareness, and as a part of a dissemination program from uh, the institute, is to inform the uh, general public, for that matter, educated or illiterate, uh, to inform and make aware awareness on the legal process, the legal uh, procedures, and the legal principles and uh, legal needs yes. okay that that is uh, but not on the basis of uh, the hardcore legal theories or legal principles that we are not uh, uh, trying to reflect in this uh, tv serial what we are basically aiming is on the normal day to day functioning on the normal day to day dealing with uh, legislation laws and anomalies that is in the laws so when they come when they have to deal with the uh, legal process so p then people become aware through that awareness then people will appreciate uh, the legal process if they appreciate the legal process then yes they can appreciate justice otherwise otherwise everyone looks for the justice yes but if the process is not clearly known to one who is seeking justice, then justice will never be uh, uh, never be available with the person who is really seeking for justice. So in order to know what is real justice, whether one gets justice or not, it is very important for every individual, every person to know the process. So this is what exactly we are trying to portray in this uh, TV serial. And the other one is uh, supernovas. Yes. Supernovas, it particularly uh, targets towards uh, younger minds on constitution. The constitution is a mother uh, uh, law, so therefore it is very important for everyone to know. It constitution is not only for adult, even from a young mind, even for children. If they are aware of uh, constitution, then when they grow up, they will appreciate they will appreciate. If they appreciate, then definitely 
then they will appreciate other legislation too. So in that way, the, we are trying to portray in that uh, animated series from the constitutional perspective. And I forgot to name the other one is Shidei uh, Zawa, uh, that is the uh, foundation of peace. Yes. Foundation of peace. And foundation of peace is ultimately the law. So these are the two uh, series, TV serial that uh, we are going, we will be launching tomorrow. And uh, for that matter, uh, we are fortunate that uh, Our Majesty, the Queen Mother, Ji Doji Wong Wong Chuk, will be gracing our uh, launching ceremony tomorrow. And that, has, uh, that gives uh, more encouragement and inspires uh, all the all the staff in the institute, yes. but we are more humbled uh, by the presence uh, tomorrow that we are going to witness. Yes, and these are the series that will be soon aired on BBS Channel Two, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, I think that tentatively uh, we have agreed to uh, come up uh, with airing on 18th of uh, by 18th of next month. Yes, sir. I'm not trying to sing praise, but to place it on record, whatever activities that I've asked you, you've mentioned that uh, these are the brainchild of Honorable President, yes. Royal Highness. Yes. Yes. So, keeping this in mind, I've been told that uh, our Royal Highness, Honorable President, has lots of ideas, and our Royal Highness has been really creative when it comes to coming up with programs, any legal programs, anything yes. to do with laws. Yes. yes. Is it difficult for you to cope uh, as a director? As, uh, sometimes, yes. I must uh, tell you the truth. But, uh, but I must uh, be very frank with you. Because uh, she inspires the inspiration. The inspiration that uh, uh, comes from uh, our president is tremendous. And that uh, no matter uh, how you uh, are given a tax, when she gives insp inspiration, so then I must tell that uh, in, in Buddhist saying that uh, your uh, uh, calf muscle becomes uh, lighter yes, and softer. So that has been uh, always with us. So that only activates you. That activates. Then uh, motivation is always there. And uh, by seeing her, only the, the inspiration comes. So, so that's why I think, uh, from personal point of view, whatever we have uh, done so far has gone very well. But we never know there may be uh, flaws in us. Yes. But uh, that uh, we really depend on the the genuine feedback yes. of our uh, recipient of our services. Yes. So, but so far, so it is going very well. Okay. And uh, as I've said. The inspiration is uh, from our president. Okay. So, one final question, not so much related to your institute, but a general question, because you have also been uh, a Trumpan. Yes. Serving yes. Trumpan once. Keeping that in mind, sir, a general question that I wanted to ask as many people as possible yes, who yes. have legal background. That is, judiciary or the judges sometimes land up delivering injustice. Mm. to a party mm -hmm. based on the evidence that you have. In cases like this, what do you do? Because this is obvious. It happens. Mm -hmm. Person who is right may not necessarily have evidence, mm. but who is wrong may have evidence, and law actually goes by evidence. Mm. And based on that, how do you actually mm -hmm. handle it? Thank you. Uh, how did you actually handle it? Uh, thank you. Uh, so far, when uh, I was uh, presiding over cases, such situation has, uh, has, I've never faced such situation. But yet, uh, yes, you, it's a per pertinent uh, question. But in first place, uh, I must uh, inform you that uh, such things will happen in a rare, of the rare case. Because uh, the evidence holder will be a person who really uh, push forwards. Yes. And uh, it will be in the rarest of the rare cases that uh, the person who is not supposed to win will have the evidence. But there are ch 
as I've said, uh, in the rare cases, if, the, if at all happens, but the judge has to render judgment within the parameters of uh, law, no matter how interpretation he or she may uh, render, but the judges have to render it within the parameters of uh, legislation. And uh, when it comes to legislation and uh, law-making process, it is the responsibilities of uh, parliamentarians. Yes. It is the responsibility of parliamentary. So therefore, the judge has no authority or no power to make laws. So whatever is uh, in the Evidence Act or in the procedures has to be complied yes. by the uh, judge. So judge doesn't make law, so therefore judge has to comply. So there may be instances where the judge may have to uh, render judgment against his consciousness. Yes. You are exactly right. Okay, sir. I think on this note, I'd like to thank you uh, for your time here. Uh, with this, we come to the end of our program. The launch of uh, two TV series programs uh, will be held tomorrow. And as said earlier, BBS Channel 2 will be soon bringing these two uh, series, one, The Foundation of Peace, and other one, Super Noob. So you'll keep watching BBS so that you will be more aware of the legal uh, nuances that we have in our country so that many will not come into conflict uh, with laws. Thank you so much for watching the Vikutin. It's time to say good night and Thank you.